Good evening uh, to our community. Welcome to the regular meeting of the Board of Trustees for Central Unified this uh, Tuesday evening, June 27th, 2023 at 6 p.m. as we call meeting to order. Let the attendance show that all uh, board meetings are in attendance. Do you have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo. We have a, trust, a second by Trustee Solis. Will those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion carries 7-0. Uh, next, we turn if we have any comments from the public, and we will give 30 seconds for uh, members of the public if they'd like to call in at this time. Trustees, President Singh, at this time we have no public calls. Thank you so much. So next we, we will go ahead and move on to our closed session items and we will be back for uh, reconvening an open session at 7 p.m. Thank you.
Good evening, Central Unified uh, Community. Uh, thank you for joining us this uh, Tuesday evening, June 27th at 7.03 p.m. Uh, our, um, sorry, our quick items to report out uh, on from closed session on uh, item E1, we had a motion by Trustee Carrillo, a second by Trustee Solis, motion uh, item passed 7-0. On item E2, we had a motion by Trustee Sellers, a second by Trustee Solis, um, item passed 7-0. And next we turn to our Vice President, if she will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next, we invite Mr. Lazo to share about community engagement information. Good evening. If you wish to address the board, please call 559-276-3150 or fill out a request form provided on the table near the entrance and submit it to the clerk of the board prior to the meeting. If you wish to speak on an item on the agenda, please do so when that item is called. If you wish to speak on an item not on the agenda, you may speak during the public comment section of the agenda. Si desea dirigirse a la mesa directiva, llame al número 559-276-3150 o complete un formulario de solicitud provisto en la mesa cerca de la entrada y preséntelo al secretario de la mesa directiva antes de la reunión. Se permitirán comentarios públicos relacionados con los temas de la agenda cuando se llame el tema. Los comentarios públicos sobre un tema que no está en la agenda se permitirán durante la sección de comentarios públicos de la agenda. The district welcomes other language speakers to the board meetings. Anyone planning to attend and needing an interpreter for a language other than Spanish should call 559-274-4700, extension 10150, by noon on the Friday preceding the board meeting or at least 48 hours in advance to, of the meeting, so arrangements can be made for an interpreter. El distrito da la bienvenida a las personas que hablan otros idiomas a las reuniones de la mesa directiva. Cualquier persona que planifique asistir y necesite un intérprete para un idioma que no sea español, llame al 559-274-4700, extensión 10150, el viernes antes de la reunión y antes del mediodía, o por lo menos 48 horas antes de la reunión, para poder hacer los arreglos para la interpretación. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Next, we turn to our presentations, and uh, it looks like this evening we are not uh, joined by members of our, uh, our partners at Central Unified Teacher Association or Central School Employees Association. So we move on to uh, item J, Superintendent Board Communications. All right, thank you. Just a few brief um, announcements. First off, summer school is in full force, and graduation will be on July 12th at 4 p.m. here in the PAC, and Gilbert will send invites to all of you next week for any of you that are able to attend. It will include any high school student that's finishing up their requirements uh, that is doing it either online homeschool class or any of our uh, comprehensive high school campuses. I also want to remind our public, and also in case people are asking you, we are serving meals this summer at East, Teague, Biola, McKinley, Harvest, and Class, both breakfast and lunch. Uh, to date, we've served 4,209 breakfasts and 8,669 lunches. Uh, and in addition to that, for all of those that uh, need something to do now that they've been out of school for a few days, we do have libraries open at Central East, Glacier, Harvest, McKinley, and Biola, and we hope to encourage people to uh, get out there and grab a book. Our foundation, you may uh, know, hosted a successful go golf tournament on Sunday. Uh, you may not be able to see her right there over on the side, but our uh, foundation director, Serena, uh, pulled off a great golf tournament to raise funds, and so we appreciate everybody who was able to participate. Those funds go towards the college books that the foundation purchases for high school students who are taking college courses uh, so that they can take those courses and that money doesn't get in the way for them. And then lastly, today I had the opportunity to attend and speak at the Women's Chamber of Commerce of Fresno. It's a great opportunity 
opportunity to uh, talk about Central and, and what happens here. And, and I am very pleased to report that many people that I spoke to either have their children in our district and are very pleased uh, or had heard about great things in our district and could share that. And so I wanted to make sure you were aware of that as well. And that's all for me. Thank you. Anything from our board that wish to be communicated? Then we move on to comments from the public. Um, uh, Clerk Kerfon, have we received any comments from the public on items not on the agenda at this time? Yes, we have uh, one comment from the public from a Mr. Ruben Cornado. For items not on the uh, uh, agenda. We have multiple uh, okay. cards. Okay, great. Thank you, Mr. Coronado. Uh, good evening, President Singh, Board Trustee, Superintendent Davis. My name is Ruben Coronado. I'm a CPA and I'm a community member. In the last four months, I have attended over a dozen school meetings because Hispanic parents kept telling me that they are tired of attending school meetings and nothing changes. I attended a three-hour meeting at Glacier Point Middle School. There was a school principal, two uh, school vice principals. There were about 30 parents in attendance. Three hours, uh, for three hours, about 25 Hispanic parents made co requests, recommendations, and observations about the school. The main topic was a lack of communication with the school. There was no one at the front office that spoke Spanish. The Hispanic parents had been asking for a Spanish-speaking person in the front office for the last several years. According to Hispanic parents, the school did not return phone messages or emails. A month later, I went to Glacier Point looking for minutes for, of the ELEC meeting. I found out that the administration had hired a Spanish-speaking person for Wednesdays only. A few weeks later, I called Glacier Point looking for the ELAC agenda. I found out the administration had hired another Spanish-speaking person for Tuesdays and Thursdays. There was no one that spoke Spanish on Mondays and Fridays. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the public, uh, Clerk Kerfon? Uh, not for any non-agenda items at this time. Great. Thank you. Hearing that, then we move on to uh, letter L, our consent agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo, a second by Trustee Solis. Kerfon. Oh, it was, it was, oh, sorry, Trustee Kerfon. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion carries 7-0. We move on to our action items. Uh, first item, accept gifts to district, Mr. Collegian. Thank you, Trustee Singh. The following gifts to the district are attached for review, three in total, uh, all to West Campus. Uh, Central Ag Boosters donated over $2,700 to, uh, to the FFA for its banquet. Uh, Winco donated uh, gift cards valued up to $500 for the CHS 100 year anniversary celebration. And lastly, uh, McDonald's donated $449 for breakfast for Staff Appreciation Week. Administration is recommending approval of this, of this item and to accept the gifts. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. What are the desires of the board? I move to accept the gifts. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo, a second by Trustee Solis. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Next, we move on to item number two, adopt the 2023-2024 Local Control and Accountability Plan. Um, Dr. Boatwright. Yes, thank you. So returning for approval tonight is the 2023-2024 Local Control Accountability Plan. We are in year three of our current plan. The LCAP tells us how we're spending our funds to support positive student outcomes that address local and state priorities. Administration is recommending that the board adopt this local control accountability plan, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Clerk Griffon, do we have any comments from the public on this item? Yes, we do. Uh, again, Mr. Ruben Coronado. Good evening, President Singh, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Davis. My name is Ruben Coronado. I'm a CPA and I'm a community member. The local co a control accountability plan does not have any accountability. Please do not approve the LCAP. On page three of 117, it states that uh, socioeconomic disadvantaged students will generate $46,913,600 for Central Unified School District 
It also states that Central Unified School District might describe how it intends to increase or improve services for high need students in the LCAP. On page five, it states that Central is setting staff and services. What staffing and what services? On page five of 117, it states that Central Unified School District budgeted 46913600 for the additional services for the socioeconomic disadvantaged students during the 22 23 school year, but on June 28, 22, this board approved the 2022-23 LCAP with a budget of 31 million, so there's a discrepancy there of $15 million. The $46,913,600 reflecting as being budgeted is incorrect. For the last two board meetings, the supplemental concession grant had a total of, of $53 million. The current LCAP has $46 million, a difference of $6 million. Why is the reduction? I ask again, do not approve the LCAP. It has too much missing, missing information. Thank you for your time. Are there any other comments from the public at this time? Uh, not on this item. Questions or discussion from the board? Trustee Carrillo? There was a comment related to the lack of staff at Glacier Point and some of our other schools that are primarily Spanish speaking. Um, if I remember correctly, I think two meetings ago, we received a presentation on LCAP and one of the items that is going to be funded through the LCAP is gonna be 20 or 22 additional bilingual uh, liaisons. Total of 16. Additional. additional, okay, 16 additional. Total of 22 with the additional 16 new positions in which we're in the middle of the hiring cycle on currently. How does this impact, if at all, our ability to have Spanish-speaking staff at front offices, at least at our campuses, whose primarily language is identified as Spanish from our families? I, I think it uh, significantly expands the uh, service to all the schools in that need, including Glacier Point Middle School. And what are we doing moving forward to ensure um, that we meet those needs? I mean, I think it's imperative that we have Spanish speaking individuals at front desks to answer and respond to messages. I know we've, we've all received presentations from our campuses talking about the increase in absenteeism. And I think one of those, well, we don't have any specific information as to what the demographics of those students are or they're primarily uh, language spoken at home. I would presume that having someone that our families can connect with at a minimum may assist with that. That's um, exactly, so in addition that's exactly to these right. 16 Spanish speaking um, liaisons, which will have a number of responsibilities, what else are we doing to ensure that we have folks that are speaking Spanish and are available to speak to our families. Yes, so those liaisons will be positioned in the front office primarily. Um, they will be involved in um, efforts to reduce chronic absenteeism. Um, they'll be able to help um, you know, mitigate difficult situations with parents and students when they come in. Um, they, they'll be that front line um, of action you know, to, to interact with our parents to make sure that there are no barriers to communication um, on behalf of our students. We're also looking at, um, you know, I'm in the process now of planning what we call our fall institute when all of our staff returns in the fall and there will be a section there that um, works with site administration on exactly how to fully utilize um, the liaison to make sure that we, um, you know, that we have uniformity across the district and that the needs of our community are being met. Thank you. I think uh, Superintendent Davis wanted to add an addendum. I just want to add one other thing that came up in a lot of our input sessions was uh, a question about when a parent calls from another language and they leave a message, who's responding to that message. That was one of the other issues brought up in our technology team has been working on getting those settings set in the new phone system as well. So the routing to someone appropriately. That was one of the other challenges that we can um, w really fix in the next year. It, it relies on equipment changes, so. Thank you. There was also a comment related to the 46 million uh, that is allocated for the LCAP. 
in just a quick summary, can you highlight some of the supports um, or items that this $46 million is going to be used for? Because my understanding is that, well, the, these funds are provided specifically to help a set number of individual, well, specific students who meet certain criteria that make us eligible for them. This also goes into funding some of our classroom teachers and some of other staff, right? Like this is not exclusively to provide services for those students who allow us to qualify for these funds. So there are a number of things that we'll be adding for next year. So um, enhancing programs in a number of ways, but we'll also be adding, in addition to the liaisons, we're adding um, the middle school academic counselors. That's really going to have a, a great impact um, on our students. Um, we're also um, adding in um, you know, additional opportunities for expanded learning opportunities, um, tutoring supports, um, those types of things as well that will also um, benefit our students. Thank you. And can anyone address the, the discrepancy that was identified? So um, as we go through the draft process, we're constantly interacting with our county co cohorts or co and coaches. And based on some feedback that we had received from the fiscal division, there were um, differences in the way that some of our interim staff were calculating the supplemental and concentration percentages versus what they um, were representing in their budgets down at the county. So they worked closely with Mrs. Hicks in our uh, fiscal department to correct those budget figures. So yes, you will see some areas where it has been adjusted, but we, we believe it more accurately reflects exactly how much of that funding is going to those services. And if you're looking for a list of increased and improved services, it's in the back of the plan starting on page 89. It tells you exactly what action and uh, goal that, that it's in, and then you can read the actual page number that that aligns to for more detail on that. And it gives you the amount, at Thank least you. as of today. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Any other questions or comments from the board? I just really want to um, highlight and appreciate uh, both the administration as well as uh, this particular board for making actually a, a radical increase in our community liaisons. I mean, to jump from six to uh, 22, we were presented a number of different options, but this and a number of different things that are captured in the, in the LCAP are things that we really believe in terms of um, fostering our relationship with students and ultimately with families is something that's very dear and very important uh, for us at Central Unified. And so we're very excited about this particular opportunity and, and what are the relationships that we're going to be able to build and, and ultimately see student success in the, in the years to come. So that, do I have um, any motion? Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Trustee Mailing. I have a second by Trustee Kerfan. Those in, uh, the, those in uh, agreement, please say aye. 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 Uh, those, uh, those nay, those abstaining, motion carries 7-0. We move on to item number four. I'm sorry, uh, item number three, approve the 2023-2024 proposed budget. Superintendent Davis. Thank you. This evening, the proposed budget for 23-24 returns to you following the public hearing at the last meeting. Updates have been made to the budget since that time, and those updates include fixes to the number of classified and MSC staff, which also then impacted the criteria and standards at the end, and also projection changes in the 24-25 and 25-26 year. Uh, since our public hearing, there is not a change to current year information that you have. I would like to take an opportunity to acknowledge Irma Hicks, a retired Fresno County staff member who has been helping and working closely, and welcome uh, Mr. Amir Iqbal, who's in the audience, who begins with us in a few short days. I appreciate while he was transitioning, he was also taking a look at this proposed budget to, to help us. Uh, we do recommend adoption of this proposed budget and know that at first interim, 
uh, all of the information that we gather between now and then will be added to uh, the actual budget, including uh, it will come at a time after uh, the governor has handled the tax inclusions and all of those pieces that we did not have that we usually have at this point. So hopefully answer any questions that you have. But otherwise, we do recommend action on this item so we can submit it to our county on time. Questions or comments uh, from the public? Trust, uh, Trustee Kerfon? Yes, we have a comment from Mr. Ruben Coronado. Good evening, President Singh, Board Trustee, Superintendent Davis. Uh, my name is Ruben Coronado, I'm a community member. The second interim budget that the board approved on March 14, 2023 had an ending balance of $46 million, 324,903. Two months later, on page, D, on page six, D1, the 23, 23, 24 budget has a beginning balance of $78 million, 42,248. It's an increase of about $31 million. Where did this money come from? On page six, line 3B, there's $43 million, 452,840 as restricted. The, what is this uh, amount for? Uh, the second interim budget had 4,950 4, as restricted. For what purpose is this $43 million restricted? Why is the large amount? Is this a mistake? The 23-24 uh, budget has an ending balance of 89 million, 700,355. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the public? No other comments at this time. Questions and comments from the board? Um, Superintendent Davis, can I ask you to uh, provide a little bit uh, information in terms of the questions that were raised by the public? Sure. Uh, second interim, the COVID dollars were not included. That was not a practice that had been done, and we corrected that practice. So what you see in there are the one-time funds for COVID. Um, and right now we have remaining about 31, 32 million, and so that shows up for the difference there. In terms of, uh, I believe, the restricted and moved over question that came in, uh, we do have to transfer unrestricted to restricted to cover those encroachment costs, which include transportation and special education services, as well as some of the projects such as the well project that we had to front load costs for until State Water Board um, reimburses us for that. So I believe those um, take care of the amounts that were in, in question. Thank you. Do I have a motion from the board? So moved. I have a motion by Trustee uh, Carillo, a second by Trustee Maylink. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining, motion carries 7 0. Action item number four approve assistant superintendent's employment agreements effective July 1st, 2023. Superintendent Davis. Thank you, President Singh. Uh, the Brown Act requires that prior to discussion and making action that I read out an oral report in open session uh, that uh, gives you a recommendation or summarizes a recommendation for any employee agreement um, for an executive services staff member such as an assistant superintendent. So attached this evening, we are submitting and requesting approval of the following changes to contracts. Uh, for assistant superintendents, Dr. Tammy Boatwright and Mr. Jack Collegian, um, to extend the contract one year to June 30, 2026, following their positive evaluation. And in addition to that, both to receive a 7% increase retroactive to July 1, 2022, on their current step that they are in this year. All other benefits within the contract uh, that are being submitted remain the same as prior years. Following, uh, should you approve uh, and act on these items, following approval of the board, um, beginning July 1, Dr. Tammy Boatwright will be advanced to step two and receive 174,567 and 16 cents. Mr. Jack Collegian is on step four and will receive $193,394.77. And Mr. Amir, Amir Iqbal would begin July 1 at step three and will receive $183,980.90. Uh, it, this concludes the report summarizing compensation to be paid pursuant to the recommended amendments. Uh, open up for discussion and recommend action on this item. Thank you. 
Do we have any comments or questions from the public? Clerk Grafon? No comments at this time. Comments or questions or from the board? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Solis. Second. We have a second by Trustee Cervantes. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. Those abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. We move on to item number five, approve authorized signature and mailing permit. Superintendent Davis. Thank you. In order to welcome July 1, uh, Mr. Amir Iqbal to uh, be in the position of CBO, we do need to prepare to establish for signatures for that so that at the start of the month we can get him registered on all of the appropriate accounts. We do recommend action on this item and before you leave a signature should you approve it. Are there any comments from the public? No comments at this time. Any comments or questions from the board? Uh, President Trustee Kerfan. I motion to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Kerfan. Second. We have a second by Trustee Carrillo. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 7-0. We move on to item number six, approve new job description. Mr. Collegian. Thank you, Trustee Singh. Uh, job descriptions are brought to the uh, Board of Trustees for review uh, and or revision and adoption. Attached for your consideration this evening uh, is a new job description titled Assistant Superintendent Student and Family Services. The position is located on the Certificated Management Salary Schedule and works 225 days per year. Uh, the feedback provided uh, to us while developing the uh, job description is appreciated, but we still have some work to do here this evening. So attached to this item is the proposed job description. Uh, we do need to have discussion to uh, finalize the job description. The specific area we need to take a look at uh, is under licenses and, and other requirements on the top side of the job description itself and uh, this conversation might be familiar with the school board because we've, we've had it before, uh, but we have to uh, decide on whether or not the uh, fourth bullet from the top where it reads bilingual in Spanish, uh, we move forward with posting with it reading either preferred or required. Um, outside of that, the job description uh, we believe is ready to go and is inclusive of uh, areas in which the Assistant Superintendent of Student and Family Services will uh, have oversight of, uh, and I'm um, uh, opening the floor for discussion on this, this item. Sir. Do we have any comments from the public, uh, Clerk Grafon? I don't have any comments at this time. Questions or comments from our board? Trustee Correa? I'm excited about this position. But I also have been advocating for a long time now that we, in certain positions, require Spanish. Our district serves students who are 67% majority identified as Hispanic Latino, which results in a majority of our families and communities also primarily being Spanish speaking. And I think it's imperative that this position require that the person who is selected speak Spanish. Uh, they're going to be overseeing our community liaisons, a lot of our student services, our special education, our athletics program, uh, and we need someone who understands and can directly communicate with our parents. And so I hope to be able to support uh, this item moving forward, but for me it's just really important that this position um, have someone who is Spanish speaking um, and, and can directly communicate with our community and our families. I concur. Is, is there a legal uh, aspect to required versus preferred in terms of putting us in a position of uh, liability? I, I don't believe that there's legal liability there. Uh, if we post it as Trustee Carrillo suggests, uh, the, the concern, as we've discussed before, if, if we decide to, to go with required, it essentially 
could limit the pool of, of candidates to, during the interview process. But there's no legal? No. No, I support Trustee Carrillo's um, position. Just uh, in terms of uh, this conversation, um, I definitely agree with you, Trustee Career, in terms of our numbers. Would, would you be amenable if we just say, if, if um, to say a bilingual requirement, could we say maybe the top two or three languages, or would you prefer to keep it specifically in Spanish, of our uh, top two, three languages of our district? I thought about that, but the, the, the next largest language spoken by our families be is Right, but I think even when you compare, and I, I don't have the number, so I apologize. When you compare Spanish speaking to Punjabi, I think there's a, a significant difference. And so uh, I would not, I would not. And, and the reason being that I think there's just still a significant disparity between, a statistical disparity between the two languages. Um, and Spanish is, is their dominating uh, language um, other than English, so. Trustee Solis. Motion to approve the job description with required. Second. We have a motion by Trustee Solis. We have a second by Trustee Carrillo. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Those abstaining. Motion carries 7-0 with the, uh, with the um, change in language. Thank you. Thank you. We move on to item number uh, Item number seven, approve Shields and Brawley Elementary School bid schedule and award. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, <clears throat> Board President Singh, Board of, Board of Trustees and Superintendent Davis. Uh, this item returns to you uh, tonight for your consideration to approve the bid awards for the Shields and Brawley Elementary School. Uh, the district's demographic study has characterized the need for an elementary school to support the grown, growing enrollment in that area. The new elementary school will eliminate attendance islands, reduce busing, and balance enrollment at neighboring schools. On October the 20, 22nd, 2022, the board uh, approved Kitchell Corporation to provide construction management services to manage the multi-prime construction delivery method for Shields and Raleigh. Pursuant to board policy 3311 and public contract code 2000, that require the local agencies to award public works contracts to the lowest bidders. Please see your attachments to find the combined bid result amounts, which are in line with what was anticipated. Uh, administration recommends that the Board of Trustees award the bid packages to the lowest apparent prime bidders for this project, and I'll be available for any questions you may have. Do we have any questions or comments from the public? No comments at this time. Uh, comments or questions from the board? Trustee Korea? Um, under SB1 site and offsite and SB6 plumbing, and this is just my limited knowledge, I thought Todd Companies was a plumbing company. So what is site and offsite? What services are going to be provided for that? So for site and offsite, so the, the, within the site, all of the underground plumbing, uh, sewer, storm drain, uh, domestic water uh, will, will be provided for the site. For the offsite, it's the same thing, but it's outside the limits of the, uh, of the, uh, of the school site. So it's outside the fence. So we have a lot of uh, underground infrastructure that needs to go in uh, that's, that's required. Uh, most of your point of connections to tie the school in. So that's, that's the off-site work. Why do we bid that diff separately? Why is that not part of plumbing? It, well, because on some of the, to do the off-site work, you really don't have to have like a, a, a plumber. They can be associated with the, the laborers, 294 or, or something like that, but they uh, doesn't require an actual plumber to put that, the, uh, the large diameter piping together and tie in. So those are kind of like some like trade uh, type things that, that they want to keep separate. So we just kind of avoid uh, any any uh, kind of legal issues. 
Okay. And then the price difference is significantly different, or at least to me, that seems like a big difference from the four, and still talking about the site on offsite, 4.3 million to the 5.2. If you happen to remember, was this just based on labor cost, or what is the, the yeah. difference? Uh, for between uh, SB1 and SB6? No, I'm sorry. I'm still just looking at SB1. Now I'm just comparing, comparing the bids that we received. I guess what I, we're always concerned, and I'm particularly concerned, that we're going to see an uptick in change orders, and that's where we're going to end up paying more money. But I'm just kind of curious whether you have any information that you may recall or have in front of you related to the bid difference between the 4.3 million and the 5.2 million. I, I can uh, circle back and, ch and check okay. on that. I don't That's have okay. any of that uh, with me. But, okay, yeah. no worries. Thank you. Uh -huh. Trustee Maley? Yeah, Mr. President, I need to recuse myself from this vote. Trustee Cervantes? Thank you, Board Chair. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned with the amount of people that bid, and uh, in particular, um, SB2, SB 10, 11, and 12. Um, only two people bid it, and it was almost, you know, $21 million worth of work. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, and the others, 10, 11, and 12, only one person bid it, and several people didn't qualify to bid, which means there was only one person. So I'm questioning our delivery method at this point. Did it have an impact on this? Because I'm assuming. Um, there was a lot more people interested in performing this work, but did not apply. And a lot of that has to do with uh, whether or not they're able to bond that amount. So uh, under a, a traditional uh, design bid build, they can, you know, they get assistance from the general contractor. Here they're out on their own. They're actually a, a prime contractor. So that kind of limits uh, you know, the, the playing field to, to the, the large uh, contractor that can that can bond those those type of projects okay thank you mm -hmm. mr. Rodriguez may I ask and, and maybe I'm reflecting on some of our previous projects what is the uh, process when the uh, plans were initially um, uh, had by uh, both Central Unified and and uh, our architect. When were they and when were they last reviewed, and how are they continuously reviewed by Central Unified itself? Like who on our staff, and how, how what does that process actually look like? So these this particular uh, project, the plans were were completed sometime in 2016, I believe, uh, and then there was a. Um, you have about, DSA gives you about uh, two years to, to, to start the project. And what happened is, is that we were under the constraints that where we needed an extension with DSA. So we had to work on, on uh, getting that extension to, to get going. So some of those drawings had to be updated uh, in order to um, uh, meet, that, meet that deadline. Uh, some of the things that uh, we also uh, noticed that even though the drawings were completed, we actually went to uh, Williams Elementary, which is almost identical to this site here, same architect, and we watched the traffic flow patterns during when the kids were being let out. So that kind of prompted us to kind of change certain things to make the flow move a little easier than what the drawings depicted. Um, so there was a lot of collaboration between the architect and the district. Um, as far as any input, the, the input was already, uh, there was an ed spec that was uh, submitted uh, to the board. It was approved. Uh, and so that's how this, the design and, and, and the, the layout of that elementary school was, uh, was designed under. If that answers your question, I'm not sure if I. Part, parts of it, and, and what is the um, way that we get input from uh, different folks on our, on, specifically on the district team, in terms of re reviewing uh, and, and making sure that the 
plans are as up to date as possible and may take uh, specific contingencies that sometimes an architect actually may, may, may miss. One being traffic, uh, but I'm also thinking about sometimes in terms of school layout, for instance, where a principal's um, office may be uh, maybe more conducive, maybe less conducive in terms of how to kind of think about the school. So I'm also trying to understand what is our sort of internal uh, kind of continual processes to review such plans. Right, so there's a, there's a collaboration that happens with internally. You know, you have your principals, your administrators, and, and you know, uh, during the design process, we bring in the architect and we start uh, kind of, you know, kind of building the school, uh, so to speak. So, and then it goes to, uh, once we have a, a uh, the, the collaboration finalized, we t take it to the executive cabinet. And then there, <clears throat> uh, that goes through uh, that process. We go and do the, the change based on, 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 on that meeting. Uh, and then it goes back to the, uh, the architect to make those changes. Uh, so as far as programming, uh, you know, we, we leave it up. Uh, we kind of work with with the cabinet to to program the site. And do we have the expertise within the district to actually review the architect's plans itself and double check them? Yes. You're talking about like a constructability review. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is what the CM firm uh, did uh, under this contract under with Kitchell Corporation. They did a constructability review as far as the the the, the layout and if things would work out right. Um, and so that 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 was performed uh, during the the um, prior to bid. So we had a lot, and, and in our, internally in my department, we actually looked at those plans and 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 tried to. Well, we did work with PBK, the the construction manager, our department, and collaborate to try to tighten up any kind of loose loose ends on that on that part. So to lessen the change orders. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No other questions from myself. With that, do we have a motion? Oh, sorry, Trustee Creo. I'll move to approve. We have a motion by second. Trustee Creo. We second. have a second by Trustee Kerfon. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. And we have one abstention. Motion passes six zero one. Thank you. We move on to item number eight, approve arts, music, and instructional materials, discretionary block grants. Dr. Boatwright. Thank you. For, so returning for approval tonight is the expenditure plan for the arts, music, and instructional materials block grant. In order for the district to expend these funds, a plan must be approved by the board. These funds will be available for encumbrance through the 2025-2026 school year. Um, administration is recommending that this item be approved. Do we have any questions or comments from the public? No comments at this time. Questions or comments from the board? I'll move to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Carrillo. Second. We have a second by Trustee Solis. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. We move to item number nine, approved summer expanded learning opportunities program. Mr. Garrett. Good evening, President Singh, members of the board and Superintendent Davis. Tonight I bring for action the extended learning opportunity contracts for our summer programs at Harvest and Glacier, uh, Harvest Elementary and Glacier Point Middle School. As it does during the regular school year, our ELO programs provide fun and engaging activities and learning experiences for students who participate in the morning literacy camps. This provides students with a full day learning experience throughout the summer program calendar. And it turns out that we are able to cover the program costs with ACEs and 21st century grant balances. Administration is recommending approval of this item and I'm happy to answer any questions. Clerk Kerfun, do we have any questions or comments from the public? No comments at this time. Questions or comments from the board? Motion to approve. We have a motion by Trustee Cervantes. Second. We have a second by Trustee Solis. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Those abstaining? Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. 
we move on to our information items. Number one, receive information regarding the Justin Garza High School Phase 2, Increment 3, Scope of Work. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you again, uh, President Singh, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Davis. <clears throat> Tonight, uh, I would like to present to you uh, information regarding the Justin Garza Phase 2 Increment 3 Scope of Work at the Soccer Fields, which is part of the Athletics Complex. Uh, in order for PBK to foster an expedited process through DSA, the Athletics uh, Complex project was broken up into increments, uh, which included individual scopes of work for each, each in increment. Phase two, increment one, includes all of the underground infrastructure, the championship soccer field, practice soccer field, ball fields, sports sliding, and parking lot. Phase two, increment two, consists of all the buildings for the athletics uh, complex. And phase two, increment three, scope of work, and consists of filling in the existing ponding basin for future futsal uh, play fields and relocating existing storm drain tie-ins uh, to the flood control basin that's located uh, in the Granville development on Grantland Avenue. Per our discussions at the facilities workshop, uh, administration will provide information and estimate costs for each increment in order to assist the board in determining the next step regarding phase two increment three, three and whether it can be excluded from the project or continue with progress. Uh, currently, there does not appear to be a need for, uh, in the community for futsal. However, that may change in the very, very near future. Uh, administration is recommending that this item be placed on the July 25th, 2023 board meeting agenda for action. And I can answer any questions you may have. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Carrillo? So if we, can we as a board elect not to do the futsal now? And is that something that can be done in the future? I, I don't know what it is. So I, this is where your expertise and if other board members have expertise, I'd greatly appreciate it. Um, or is this something that we need to make a decision now and it would be mu much more cost effective and in the best interest of our students to elect to include that as part of this project? It's always to do it it's cheaper to do it now, uh, you know, because of escalating costs. However, I mean, we can get by without it. It doesn't impact, uh, and I've checked with the consultants, it doesn't impact the nearby increments like the championship soccer field. It doesn't in impact any of the uh, uh, off-site um, uh, City of Fresno improvements. So, I, you know, it, it can be done at a later date. Um, it's just, uh, it, it, it's going to, take quite a bit of work to uh, uh, f fill it in and, and tie in across, across, the, across the street, across the way. But it, to, your, to answer your question, yes, it, c it doesn't have to be done now, but it's cheaper to do it now, if that makes any sense. Trustee Kerfan. Thank you, President Singh. Uh, I'm just curious because I don't think I was here at the start of our uh, initial scope. Uh, what made us choose futsal over any other sports or fields? So, so the, this particular athletic fields has gone through multiple iterations, right? I mean, they, they uh, and they had uh, they had the athletics department. They had our former superintendent uh, in collaboration to to. You know, they, they, they must have saw a need based on their meetings uh, for futsal. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm picking up the ball where the ball, you know, where, where it was left and I'm running with it. But uh, to, to answer that question, I, I couldn't, I, I believe that that's where it originated from during those meetings. Uh, I, I guess I'd wanted, I would, I would like to see um, maybe some information as to how many of our students uh, play futsal or if our, PE coaches or athletic directors are asking for futsal um, before we make some kind of decision on this. And that's a that's a good question, and I'll I can get that information for you. Trustee Kerfan, if I remember correctly, none of us sitting on this board even participated in creating these plans. And in fact, since I've been on the board, we've been doing a lot of cleaning up and correcting. Um, 
So we'd probably have to look back at the minutes and if it's like anything else that we've had to look back and decide, because these plants have got to be what, over 25, maybe 30 years old? I'm exaggerating, but it's definitely not in. The original plans are well over 10 years old, but the redesign to include the futsal and the filling into the basin, that was taking place between 2020 and 2021. So when the other fields were redesigned uh, to address other issues that were identified that needed to be fixed, the discussion around the soccer fields and what could be done there um, added in a couple of different options. At one point, when we looked back through the minutes, we found a community park discussion mm -hmm. that occurred but never was applied in, into the design. And then what landed was the futsal in terms of the, the design that, that came to board both in August and, and this one in September. Of I can tell you, if that, dis if that is part of the 2020, I have zero recollection that this board engaged in any discussion about futsal and that we provided that direction or that I participated in that discussion. Maybe I missed the meeting. I don't know. I, I'm not saying that you're not wrong. I, I just think that perhaps there were other discussions and direction given that. To answer your question, Trustee Kerfon, I don't know. Well, well n nothing against our <laughs> current administration or the, the sport of futsal itself, but I just would want to know um, if there is a you know outsized community need or ask for futsal over other sports such as cricket or um, I don't know basketball, archery, anything else. Um, and I may change my mind. You know, once I get information, maybe there's a huge futsal community in Fresno I don't know about yet. But so to go back, uh, October 2020. It was a final uh, redesign that was presented to the board sometime around there. And then again in February the 2nd of 2022, another redesign of the athletics field was presented at a facilities board workshop to the board. And I think on that particular meeting, I think the futsal was there. Sure, Superintendent Davis. And then I think. We'll even though those dates are true and accurate, what we found in the minutes also supports what you're saying, which is it wasn't a conversation, there was a diagram that was presented. It wasn't a discussion of, we have this need or we have this interest. It was, here's a design and here's how we could use that space. Mm -hmm. And and so I could not find anything to your point of a conversation either and, and um, we, we didn't have that either. So. Yeah, it, it, I know that other board members have comments. What I, the point I was trying to make to you, Trustee Griffon and police administration and staff, by no means was I trying to offend anyone. That might have been just there, but there was never a discussion of the cost and this board saying, yes, we want to include futsal because we've been told this is the next big thing students are interested in or we've heard from students. So thank you, um, Superintendent Davis. Trustee Sellers. Uh, well, I just, I'll speak to that. Uh, in the beginning, I had no idea what futsal was. Uh, mm. Since then, I have actually had numerous members of the community uh, express their gratitude and interest that we're going to move forward with this or hoping that we move forward with this, that uh, it's big in the soccer community and something that they're looking forward to. Um, my question is, when the facilities are done, are we going to open these up to the public for use, uh, much like our other sites. Um, that was one of the things that members of the community have expressed that where we're at geographically in the state, we don't have a facility like this. On, even on this side of the, the community, the city, everything's folks traveling out to Clovis, and they're really excited about this. So that would be up to the board. Trustee Solis? I'm assuming the intent is to bring this item back either as a consent or an action. Yes. Okay. With that, uh, Mr. Chair or Mr. President, could we bring it back as an action? Also, the superintendent, could you please bring back information and in the interim meet with our athletics department to see what exactly is the need for this as well as contacting any uh, uh, youth soccer leagues in the area and see if they have a need for this facility and bring back a report as well as on how much is this 
item going to cost? Thank you. Don't we have information as to what it's going to cost? Yeah, I provided a, a cash flow analysis. Can you remind us of what the added it's to cost? To the tune of around six million. A after all, the soft costs and everything are are, are, are together. Um, the only thing I would ask trustee sellers, if those community members that are reaching out to you, invite them to our meeting and to reach out to us. Because I, I mean, if it's something that the community is interested in and there's a need, I mean, my ignorance shouldn't impact our ability or my decision to support this or not to. I think Superintendent Davis also wants to share something on the item. I think if we're looking for input from the parties that were just mentioned, um, it would be reasonable to have to bring it back in August. The people we're talking about are not here and available to us right now. So we have a limited access point to get some of that input. So we would have to delay it. I'm not saying there's any problem to get it. It just, um, by July 27th, or 25th, excuse me, I would have very limited access to some of those groups. Trustee Kerfa. Um Thank you, President uh, Singh. Uh, Trustee uh, Solis, would you be amenable to uh, amending your motion to put on the uh, action items for August? What's our time uh, restraints on getting this item approved? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand that. What's the timeline you're looking to get approval and complete this project in a reasonable time? I can, think you have a little, wait until August? You, you have a little time. They, they, they've done some work. Uh, I, I, I imagine, I don't know, Bob, what do you think? Do you think we can kind of wait a little bit to wait for yeah, increment three? Yeah, we, yeah we have some time. Okay, so yes, that's fine, August. Trustee Cervantes. Thank you, Board Chair. I'm having a hard time hearing. Did, did you say that the cost was about approximately $6 million? That's when everything is all in included with the soft cost, the hard cost, construction costs, and then all that, of the... That $6 million is strictly for the futsal courts? That's what it's estimated right now. Uh, you know, okay. we, we, we've been hitting it on, on, on point, but, uh, you know, things could change. So do the courts dub as anything else, or is it strictly... So, so in that area, Futsal. I'm sorry. Do they dub as anything else? Can they be utilized for basketball? Can they be utilized for anything other than futsal? I, I'm sure they can. I, I really don't know too much about the sport. Uh, I, I, I think it's a developmental thing for soccer. Sure. And, and close contact, proximity, smaller ball, foot, uh, yada. Um, it, but with that being said, um, I am concerned with if they cannot be used for anything other than futsal because if they're not being used for futsal, what is that space doing besides sitting there? So it looked like in, in terms of the, uh, the, the drawings, it looked like almost like a basketball. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's a, a, uh, a um, uh, <laughs> I'm losing my, um, a goal or is that an actual ring like a basketball but yeah. anyway yeah. so yeah I, I think there's more to be had here T um, typically the that that sport is played indoors and yeah. and, and on a hard surface from what i've read right but it's a small yeah i think outdoor i think i've seen people do it with tennis balls smaller balls but i think it really de uh, it's a developmental uh sport for soccer yeah okay thank you trustee korea yeah, my first question, just phrased differently. If we delay this till August, what's the impact to the project? So currently right now, there isn't because we're, we're, we're currently working on increment two right now. So uh, increment three has been very, very little done. We, we have received some schematic designs for it, uh, but uh, to, to my knowledge, and I have PBK, uh, uh, architects with me and I don't believe there's ha there's been any uh, um, engineering work yet on, on this uh, at, at this point but I believe that we can hold off till till August we're, we're our main focus right now is is the increment two uh, portion of the athletics complex which is all the buildings that I kind of previously mentioned so that's what we're really focusing on right now and the constructability of yeah. that. So I think we have a little time. 
When this item returns in August as an action item, can we get some more information as to whether um, these fields can be used for anything else? I mean, kind of, I, I'm assuming, I don't, I, I again, I have, I know nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so any information that would be helpful to someone who knows nothing and making a decision of whether to spend $6 million? Sure, and, and I have some ideas of my own that I, I think that would probably be benefit the community, and I'll, I'll include those as well. Fantastic, thank you. I just also want to make note, if I may, excuse me. Um, there's five soccer fields plus a championship soccer field plus these. Um, I, I don't. I want to say I don't think like we're neglecting our soccer community. That's a lot of soccer um, um, facilities to be available for um, play and and developmental of. A, we've got a great soccer program here at Central, and I want to see that continue. And I love sports, but I'm some, I'm thinking. Would six million dollars be better spent in a more appropriate academic uh, uh, reason? Anyway, and again, I'm not against soccer, uh, uh, but again, there are there is a ton of soccer that we are investing in. Uh, five fields plus a championship field, six fields, full size fields. So, okay, I saw trustee mailing and then trustee Korea. Yeah, um, I, I know we're going to fill in the ponding basin. And I know that across the street there's going to be a, a ponding basin there. Has any of the infrastructure been put in on the Granville site to even support this if it gets through the winter, if we fill that in? So we've had discussions with the uh, Granville uh, folks. Uh, they have already dug out that particular basin that we're supposed to tie into. However, they're not going to dig anymore because they've got enough for their development. So we, if we are going to move forward, we would have to dig it out and uh, for the capacity that we need and tie in. And uh, from what I understand from the engineers is that all the infrastructure is already there in the street. It's just a matter of going into a manhole, plug one uh, end up, and then open up another. So that infrastructure is already there, but the capacity uh, to tie into is not. So we'll, we'll need to do some work on their property. So does that six million and a half million dollars have that's not included in this no that's included because dirt dirt is cheap it, the, the thing it is is truck your trucking costs are sky high so that's that's part of the cost okay thank you mm -hmm. oh. okay Tr okay that, stands for, that poses the question what do the f uh, futsal courts cost not the whole thing i'm glad you clarified do we know what the, the courts themselves, only the courts, what that's going to cost? Only that area that we're, we're talking about now? Yes, sir. Increment three the, is, is approximately $6 million when you include the soft cost to it. Again. The, uh, the, soccer, the soccer fields that you're, you're, you're uh, referencing are increment one. That is currently going on right now. That is, that is in progress right now. No, I don't think I'm asking the question correctly. Okay. Somebody, you can help, yes. Maybe. <laughs> Please. The futsal will be placed on top of the filled in um, basin. So we have to fill in the basin to put the futsal on top of it. Yeah, yeah so what he's asking, that, what does it gimme. cost to fill in the basin? Just that's the a basin, gimme. right. Yeah, that, that part is a gimme. We have to do that. We have to. Right, so my we, question is, what are the futsal courts gonna cost? I think we could take Only off. the gotcha. futsal. I don't have that. Uh, with me available today, but I can I can get that to you. Okay, I think that would be very uh, helpful. Trustee Korea. The last thought, and then we can continue talking about this in August. If I remember correctly, the reason probably this board didn't have a discussion about what to do with that space was because when we initially had a conversation, we were trying to figure out what that space was big enough to do with. I remember there was a discussion about potentially putting a baseball field there, but then the soccer fields were there, and so I remember that, but I, I can assure you that we did not discuss <laughs> and direct to put futsal um, courts there, but I would be interested in knowing what's the cost of the, the basic minimum we have to do, and then the additional cost for that futsal field, and then just a little more information to understand what is a futsal. Thank you. Thank well. you. So we'll move to action in, in August. 
uh, and provide the necessary information. Item number two, receive information regarding professional architectural services for the Justin Garza High School Phase Two projects. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, uh, President Singh, uh, Board of Trustees, and Superintendent Dav Davis. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce to you uh, Mr. Bob Levy. Uh, he is the managing partner for PBK Architects. Uh, Bob oversees operations uh, for PBK's seven California offices. Uh, Bob was also instrumental in providing our district with over $200,000 in savings through a series of credits on the attached proposals. We've had some tough conversations to get here. Uh, you know, while challenging at times, these, the, uh, these conversations were necessary uh, to come to a mutual understanding on the best approach to move forward and, and hope uh, will foster a, a more positive long-term relationship with PBK Architects. As some trustees may recall, there were uh, three amendment uh, proposals for PBK Architects of Fresno that were approved by the board in the fall of 2020 for design services of what we now call phase two of Justin Garza High School. They were the visual and performing arts uh, building, the aquatics complex, and the ball fields, uh, which we refer to as the athletics complex now. As mentioned previously, in order for PBK's, <coughs> PBK architects to foster an expedited process through DSA, the uh, athletics complex project was broken up into three increments and individual scopes of work for each, each increment. Uh, industry standard practice is to re revise proposals from time to time to reflect either a known cost or an estimated cost as construction trends associated with inflated costs have uh, escalated since 2020 throughout the state. Historically, the athletics fields uh, went through multiple iterations of design layouts to include revising the ball fields, layout, parking lot, community park, championship soccer fields, beach volleyball, and maintenance yards, to name a few. Uh, for your consideration tonight, the district has received proposals from PUK Architects and re with reflected uh, credits from the phase one for those services. The approval of the proposal will allow PBK Architects to continue to provide services in order to meet the growing needs of our students. Administration has recommended this item be placed on the July 25th, 2023 uh, board agenda for action. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions or comments from the board? Trustee Mayor? Actually, I would just ask if you change the, the heading on, on, on these and not said Central High School, because um, I immediately want to think that it's, we're, we're going to the West Campus, and then if we're going to approve this, um, pull 0847.2 until we do the, we talk about the futsal. There's some work that's been done, uh, so we would have to approve that particular uh, futsal proposal because they, like I mentioned, they did do some schematic design work, so they need to be paid for, for that. But we can, if in the event that we do or not move forward with increment three, we'll, we'd obviously let PBK Architects know that to shelf the project. Okay. But uh, the name, uh, the change, uh, Bob says, not a problem. Yeah, it just looks like we're we're talking about something different. If you're not, if if you have no idea what they're what you're looking at. Thank you, Trustee Korea. So, with respect to the futsal, um, just for clarification, because I tend to remember these things. There is work that already has been done, so of course we're gonna to agree to pay for that. Um, but there's a component of this that is future cost, right? Not all of it is current cost. Future cost as in the proposal, yes. Yeah, so we would just uh, you know, approve it, pay them for what they've done, and, and then uh, just terminate, okay. terminate the proposal. So that the direction is clear that it, we don't want any more work done with respect mm -hmm. to that project until we get answers to our questions and the item is approved in August. If I'm not mistaken by the board, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So then we will also have that as an action item to return in August? In July. Oh, sorry, in July. 
Yeah, can we have this become uh, return as an action item just so that I can include that as part of a, the motion or someone else? Yeah, please. Mr. President. Trustee and then I, I actually, what is the need to fill in that basin? Why do we have to do that? You don't have to do it. It's just if you want the uh, that particular, the futsal, then we would have to fill in the basin. Um, so if we decide not to go futsal, we don't even have to touch the basin. Correct. And it doesn't impact any of the nearby work that's going, going you know, in there. You just won't have... You just won't have some of the amenities that are planned for that area, like there's a, a men's and women's bathroom that's planned for that area. You won't have that. You won't have a flagpole. You won't have the futsal. You won't have the concrete improvements. You won't have any underground infrastructure there. You won't have lighting in that area. Okay. Thank you. May I have some yeah, Trustee Korea. So, considering how long it takes to be able to generate funds for these types of projects, at a minimum, I'd want to know what just that additional cost to fill in the basin and have those basic amenities so that, or infrastructure to begin with, so that then future boards have something to work with to build upon. I think, given that the only good estimate we can rely on is that everything is going to continue to go up. I think it would be in our best interest to, at a minimum, do that. But I appreciate that because I thought we had to do something. Thank you. Thank you. Item number three, receive information regarding the June's quarterly Williams Uniform Complaint Procedure. Dr. Boatwright. Yes, this item provides information if there are deficiencies reported um, regarding sufficient materials for students or facilities complaints. Uh, principals and departments will compi compile this information for the quarterly report. Administration is recommending that the board hold a public hearing on July 25th and then approve the June quarterly Williams complaint procedure. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments um, about this, uh, about the upcoming hearing from the board? Then item will return on July 25th, um, and we will hold the public hearing. Item number four, receive information regarding local indicators included on California dashboard. Uh, Mrs. Grisby. Good evening, President Singh, Superintendent Davis, and board members. Um, coming back to you annually is the local indicator spring informational report. The California Accountability and Continuous Improvement System provides information about how districts and schools are meeting the needs of our diverse school populations. Um, districts are required to present the local indicators, as they're called, to our local board, along with the approval process for the local control accountability plan. You have attached a summary of how we've uh, fulfilled those different local indicator measures as being met. Um, and you also have a copy of the new teaching assignment monitoring outcome report that is new. In the past, we calibrated um, our teaching assignment data that we uploaded into our uh, school accountability report cards. Internally, that was always done by each district's own HR department, but the state of California has collaborated between CalPADS system and uh, CTC to um, uh, put out this first annual report, which will now go into the dashboard indicators for us. So it will automatically upload into the SARC. So technically speaking, the SARC is still the requirement of meeting that local indicator. The reporting is just looking a little different. So I wanted you to get a look at what that looks like, because it's new. Happy to answer any questions. And again, this is an informational item. Questions or comments from the board? Uh, Mrs. Grigsby, can you share a little bit on the report total, the item um, uh, called ineffective? Could you share a little bit more about uh, what that entails? I've got the definitions here. Let me just find it. Uh, 
Um, an assignment of monitoring outcome is named ineffective when one or the more relevant attributes of the assignment has no legal authorization from a permit, credential, or waiver, or one or more of the re re relevant uh, attributes of that assignment are not authorized by the following permits. Uh, provisional internship, short-term staff permit, variable waiver, or a sub-permit. So it, it's a teacher that has none of those things, including a credential. So, so according to this report, mm -hmm. six point, oh, sorry, yeah, six point nine percent of our uh, those in the classroom do not have one of those four. Um, the yes, cat, or pardon, not one of those four categories. Yes. Based on the reporting that was uploaded into CalPads from California Teaching Credentialing Association. Okay. Thank you. Again, this item is only for information, but is there any other questions or comments from the board? Trustee Carrillo? Can you remind us, self-contained class, what does that mean? K-6. Okay. Or TK-6 now. TK. I thought Sorry, so, I'm given, old. <laughs> given the descriptions yeah. of the other classes, but I wanted to make sure. Um, so is that, going back to President Singh's question with respect to the 6.9% of our total 700 and something FTEs um, being, or the, the rating of uh, ineffective, 702.2, uh, is that a, something we should be concerned about? I mean, I guess what is the overall impact? Because it's much higher than our neighbor, than Fresno. Um, and much higher than the statewide percentage. Yeah, Ms. Curry, I missed the conversation. I, w I was away. Um, what was it regarding uh, in internships, STIPS, PIPs, STIPs, uh, PIPs and, and university interns? Yeah. And, we and, and whether we whether they, they are considered fully qualified, was that the question? Yeah, our, our uh, special education department, science teachers, math teachers, uh, even some of our singletons like in consumer family services are on some of those uh, um, emergency credentials, if you will. Uh, and by state definition, not considered fully qualified. Uh, and that's a kind of a, it's a moving cycle. Uh, some of those will be fully credentialed by, you know, next month or next semester, and those gaps close. So we, we have had challenging times filling special education, physics and mathematics positions. Uh, and we're seeing uh, some of our singleton positions like, uh, uh, for example, uh, our, our instructors in, uh, I think, um, foreign languages, uh, our, our, our teacher in Hmong and Punjabi are still finishing those out, although they have base credentials, they're on limited assignments, and basically from what they're teaching and the state definition, it does give us a ding. Okay, thank yeah. you. I would add that this is... Um, data that's based on a one-time snapshot from fall two cow pads so that's very that's right. early in the school year and also statewide there's been a huge amount of debate over these terms calling teachers ineffective it's been a very active and engaged conversation but it comes it stems from requirements from ESSA which is federal requirements of making sure we're making every effort to um, support teachers that need it and also to provide the most highly, qual highly qualified teachers to the students that need them most so all of that stems from the federal government and this is the state of California's um, solution to updating that reporting rather than just allowing districts to report on themselves so it's relatively new nobody likes those terms because everybody's working really hard and we have lots of people supporting them and this is the first time this report has ever come out so it's the first time we've ever really seen how they're gelling the numbers and how the data is coming together right and thank you that's why I'm glad president Singh, and thank you assistant superintendent yeah. Legion for nobody us. likes those no 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 I mean they're <laughs> nasty words and when you look at the definition it's like oh okay that makes sense so thank you I might have led with that sorry <laughs> Trustee Kerfoff. Thank you, President Singh. Uh, I have another definition question. Um, so we've established what ineffective means and how it's not great. Uh, how is that different from incomplete? If ineffective means that they're a few months or a semester away from getting their credentials, what would incomplete I'm not seeing yeah, incomplete it's, it's in the It's essentially on a, on a sliding scale. Yeah. So, the, so the incomplete would be I, I just got hired on a fresh internship and I'm just started my program 
and I'm in the middle of oh, taking yes. my competency exams, my CSETs, if you will, versus the ineffective mm -hmm. teacher who may be six months in and has passed one or two of the competencies and they're on their way there. So think of it as it on a spectrum, uh, Mr. Kerfan. And as they get to highly qualified, meaning the state has issued you a full a credential, is, is at the end of the spectrum. So incomplete is lower than ineffective. Yeah, you're essentially Actually, at the very start part, early part of it. Yeah, uh, sorry to interrupt, but that's not how they're using it here. Mm -hmm. Incomplete means an assignment monitoring outcome of incomplete indicates that missing or incorrect information about the assignment was reported to CalPADS by the LEA, which prevented a complete and accurate determination of the assignment authorization during the CTC assignment monitoring process. In some cases, the LEA or monitoring authority may have indicated that the assignment is appropriate. However, neither the CDE nor the CTC can validate the authorization basis for the assignment. So in essence, they just didn't get complete information to verify whatever we under, provided them. Uh, under a limited assignment. Something along the way yeah. is missing, yeah. They don't even include the limited assignment, but perhaps that's... Oh, yeah. yeah. It, it, I, I, I know that when we just submit those reports, that mm -hmm. comes up. So example would be if you're a uh, multiple subject teacher, your credential is good in that area, but you're teaching mathematics, Mm. and you're attempting to take the C-sets. I think it would fall into that area. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I can provide links to any of those uh, web pages where you can study those definitions more deeply if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Grigsby. Item number five, receive information on SPED support service contracts for 2023-2024. Dr. Boatwright. Yes, so these contracts do support student wellness. Um, we have three contracts that are here. The first one is Goodfellow Therapy, which is a returning contract for renewal. Services are provided that include therapy, consultations, and assessment plans. We also have Hannah Interpreting uh, here, which provides services required for translation of IEP documents and interpretation at IEP meetings. Um, Hannah would be a new vendor for Central Unified. We also have ORCID Interpreting, um, which also provides services required for um, translation of IEP documents. Both HANA and ORCID Interpreting contracts are being brought tonight so as not to exceed. Um, we will use HANA as our primary and ORCID as backup this coming year. Our hope is that HANA does well for us this year, and then we will dismiss um, ORCID. Administration is recommending that this item be placed on the July 25th board agenda item for action, and I'm happy to an answer any questions that you may have. Questions or comments from the board? Just because I did receive a, a few comments via email, so I'm just going to ask for this to return at the next meeting as an action item. Okay. Thank you. Number six, receive information regarding core and supplemental materials. Dr. Boatwright. So school staff have reviewed and recommended these items for use beginning with the new school year. We are requesting approval for the following textbook and supplemental instructional materials. The first item is a novel that's called Save Me a Seat. This novel is about how you shouldn't assume certain things about people until you get to know them. Um, the main character in the book is a student with an auditory processing disorder. The second item is a textbook that will be used as a supplementary um, item in philosophy elective classes at our secondary sites. And then the final item is Teach Town, which is a supplementary curriculum that will be used with special education students in moderate to severe classes. Administration is recommending that this item be placed on the July 25th board agenda for action. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, then we can return it to consent. Number seven, receive information on the purchase of a semi-trailer for Justin Garza High School. Mr. Bott. Uh, good evening, Board President Singh, uh, board members, and Superintendent Davis. Uh, Justin Garza uh, High School Band Department is in the need of a semi-trailer to support student activities. The trailer is needed for show, com uh, competitions, and festivals. The semi-trailer will be built specific with specific storage, <clears throat> and, uh, 
and specifications for band instruments and the, u and the use of band events. The district does own a semi-trailer uh, semi that is used by Central East High School uh, for the same need. <coughs> On June 28th, uh, 2022, the board approved the use of public code 20118, which allows districts to utilize com uh, com cooperative bids secured by other public agencies uh, for the purchase of materials and services. Staff is recommending the use of the Clovis Unified School District piggyback contract 2894 with Clubhouse Trailers. The cost of the trailer will be $215,663.23. The, uh, the district will use funds by the Arts, Music, and Instructional Materials Block Grant. Administration is recommending the board place this on the July 25th board agenda after I answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Trustee Kerfan. Thank you, President Singh. So since this is piggybacking off of Clovis Unified's contract, does this mean that the, we're borrowing a semi-truck that Clovis Unified has? No, so we are piggybacking off their um, request for proposals. So they went out, wrote the spec and uh, specifications for the trailer, went through the bidding process, and we are able to use their results in order to go purchase the trailer. I see, okay, so there's, there's no point where we're sharing the same. No. Got it, thank you. Trustee Malik? Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm okay with the purchase, just out of curiosity, hey, who who moves it for us? Do we have to have a rental company or truck to come, come move it? Yeah, so we do rent a semi truck. Uh, we do, in the past, have used parent volunteers, district staff, and have also hired a driver with the rental vehicle to be able to do the move for, or to be able to use the trailer. All right, thank you. If no other questions from the board, can we move it to the consent agenda? Thank you, Mr. Bott. Thank you. Next, we move on to advanced planning. No changes, sorry, the calendar is attached. Thank you. Any additional information or closing comments from, from the public or from members of the board? Trustee Carrillo? I do, um, I completely missed this, but under our consent agenda, we had the extended learning um, opportunities program, so our after school program that I thought was under action. Um, in any case, I've heard some I've received some calls from families from Liddell that are saying that they've already been notified that they're on the wait list for Campus Connection because they didn't meet the qualifications or weren't approved for the um, other after school program. And so I'm wondering if at some point, or maybe I can just get some additional information as to the criteria that we're using or when we're notifying parents if they are qualifying or have been approved. Um, for the after school program just in general. Right, so right now we're in the process of collecting interest forms. So students have not even been placed in programs yet and it's my understanding that we've collected 80, 80 plus okay. interest forms. Um, I don't know about a wait list for Campus Connection though, that doesn't sound accurate to me so I can um, get more information on that. Yeah, that'd be great and I mean you can email it to the board just so that in case anyone else is getting similar questions, but it was something that I also said. I, I have no idea why we have a wait list now. Let me okay. ask and follow up. Okay. Uh, Area Administrator Jeff Garrett, did you want to add anything? Uh, I can, yeah, so we did do an interest uh, form at the be, uh, end of the school year. Uh, we sent it out multiple times through Parent Square and also had paper copies available at our sites as well. Um, and that was to gain interest um, so that we could plan in our staffing over the summer um, to try to mitigate any wait lists as much as we can to start the school year. Uh, the game plan starting in August is anybody who showed interest into the program through that, that format will be contacted by our after school programs and they'll go through the registration process at that time. But those numbers really are going to be helpful in us starting the year as close to a zero wait list as possible. So there's no current wait list. It's more of that interest list that then are, we'll be following up with those families by phone beginning in August. Okay. Can we make sure that somebody follows up 
and just makes that clear. I mean, I'll, I'll contact the parents that I received calls from. Um, you mentioned Parent Square, so just want to clarify, did we provide these interest forms any other way for like our families who um, are not tech savvy or don't have access to technology? Yes, so the Parent Square message had the uh, interest form in through and uh, translated in uh, it was English, Spanish, and Punjabi. And then there was also information included in that message that it was available at the school sites okay. as well as all current, all, all the sites that had, all the after school program sites also made sure that they were passing those interest forms out and had them available for students that were currently in the program as well as anybody else who was interested in taking one. Okay. I know we had asked for um, an item to come back to the board, just kind of giving us an overview of the different after school programs and, and where we're going to be going. Can we include some of this information as well um, related to the process of admitting students and these interest forms just so that I know for my benefit, I can be better prepared to answer these questions when I get them. Mm -hmm. um, I would appreciate that. Thank Absolutely. You. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other um, additional information or closing comments from members of the public or the board? Then with that, our next meeting will be held uh, here at the Central East High School Performing Arts Center on Tuesday, July 25th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Just to end at closed session, 7 p.m. public session. Just to note that will be our only meeting in the month of July. And from that, we will adjourn to closed session, back to closed session. Thank you. <laughs>